Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning all of you, I am Dr. Naresh Mahipal, Senior Assistant Professor from Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the concept of marine insurance. This is our lecture number 8 in uh, the subject insurance law. Previously we have discussed about the origin of insurance law, the historical development of insurance law globally as well as in Indian context and we have also discussed about the concept of insurance law, how the insurance law emerges and what is the concept of insurance law. Thereafter we have also discussed about the principles of insurance laws that what principles govern insurance law while forming a insurance law contract. Then we have discussed about the formation of life insurance contract. Now, what are those variables which uh, are responsible for the determination of the certain principles which justify the formation of a life insurance contract. Then we have discussed about the premium. The premium in insurance contract that is to say cons consideration this is guided by many variables, many factors calculates the amount of premium that is to be charged, whether the policy should be issued or not, whether it, the claim should be given or not. It helps the underwriter to decide the premium amount. So certain variables, those are responsible to decide the premium. Then we have discussed about the insurable risk. Insurable risk means those risks which are insurable. The insurers insure those risks. And in today's lecture, we will discuss about the concept of marine insurance. In this lecture itself, we will discuss the concept of marine insurance, where it comes from, that is origin of marine insurance. And we will discuss the marine insurance with the help of some definitions and uh, then historical development of marine insurance, how it originated, where it originated and what is the present position about the marine insurance, we will discuss in detail. And thereafter, we will discuss about the nature of marine insurance, also the scope of marine insurance and the classifications of marine insurance. How many types the marine insurance can be classified? We will discuss in detail with the examples also. And then we will discuss about the types of marine insurance policies. How many types of policies are available? This all thing will be discussed in detail. So first of all, we will discuss about the concept of marine insurance. To introduce the concept of marine insurance, we can say that the desire to protect a person from uncertain loss, the business of insurance comes into existence. Marine insurance covers risk at sea and on land, that is inland marine. Marine insurance indemnifies vessel owners against the loss or damage at the ship or the sea or on inland waterways. It compensates cargo lost or damaged and route through fire, theft or shipwreck. Insurance is rather a simple notion. You must buy insurance if you own something important for which you cannot afford to replace it with anything in the event that it is lost or destroyed. Purchasing marine insurance gives you the assurance that 
in the event of an unfortunate circumstances, the insurer provides you with lessening your losses without affecting your pocketbook. We can say that marine insurance is an assurance that if a particular kind of event happens, the insured person will be paid the money by the insurer. The formal instrument embodying the contract of marine insurance is called the policy and the slip or covering note by whatever name we can call it, it is an insurance policy. And it is the informal memorandum that is drawn up when the contract is entered into. The subject matter insured and the consideration for the insurance are respectively known as the interest insured and the premium. The person who is indemnified is known as the assured and the other party who assures is styled as the insurer or the underwriter so called because he subscribes his or underwrites the policy. So after going through these terminologies we can say that a type of insurance coverage known as marine insurance is intended to guard against risks and hazards that may arise during maritime transit or trips as well as to safeguard ships, cargoes and other maritime interests. By offering financial protection to cargo owners, exporters, importers and shipping companies against the inherent risk of marine transportation, it promotes trade and commerce. It provides coverage for shipments and boats sailing across the sea in the international water and through many maritime jurisdictions, making it crucial for international trade and transit. So, understanding the concept of marine insurance, let us make it more clear with the help of certain definitions that are prevalent. The basic principle of a contract of marine insurance is that the indemnity recovery from the insurer is the pecuniary loss suffered by the insured under the contract in a manner and to the interest thereby agreed between the parties. Merriam Webster's Dictionary and Thesaurus defines the term insurance as coverage by contract whereby one party undertakes to indemnify or guarantee another against the loss by a specific contingency or peril. Section 3 of the Marine Insurance Act 1963, it gives a very comprehensive definition of marine insurance. It provides that a contract of marine insurance is a contract whereby the insurer undertakes to indemnify the assured in manner and to the extent thereby agreed against marine losses that is to say the losses incident to marine adventure. According to section 5 of the Marine Insurance Act 1906, it says that anyone with an insurable interest can purchase a marine insurance policy, cargo or items that are lost or damaged while being transported from one place to another place are covered by a marine policy. 
टिल इट रीचेज और अराइव एट द डेस्टिनेशन रेल रोड एयर एंड सी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एज वेल एज दो फॉर कॉरियर एंड पोस्टल सर्विसेज आर अमंग द वेरियस काइंड ऑफ मैरिन इंश्योरेंस प्लान दस With the help of these definitions, we can uh, say that a marine insurance policy is an insurance policy which reimburses the insured party for the damage to the insured cargo while in transit. The definition of marine insurance, as per the Marine Insurance Act, nineteen hundred six, makes it clear that. the insurance policy covers transit by sea air or waterways before or after the sea voyage as long as these transits are incidental to the main sea voyage in maritime cargo loss during transit fire explosion hijacking collisions and overturns are the most frequent causes a maritime insurance policy may provide particularly selected plans in addition to covering theft malicious damage shortages non delivery of products damages during loading and unloading and mistreatment of cargo so understanding the concept of maritime insurance now we can discuss about the origin of marine insurance what is the historical development of marine insurance the origin of marine insurance is as old as historical development the oldest forms of insurance traced are found in the form of bottomry contracts which were practiced by the merchants of babylon in early as 4000 to 3000 bc it was also practiced in india by the hindus during 600 bc under a contract of bottomry loans were granted to the merchants with the provisions that if the shipment was lost or robbed by pirates or got sunk in the deep water the loan did not have to be repaid the interest on the loan covered the risk however there is no evidence yet that in the present form insurance was practiced in prior to 12th century as the civilization progressed insurance cover grew with it so while discussing the origin of marine insurance it is important to discuss the global development of marine insurance the historical development of marine insurance marine insurance as i told you that is the oldest form of insurance under the bottomry contract loans were granted to merchants of babylon with the provision that if the shipment was lost robbed or sunk at sea the loan did not have to be repaid the interest on the loan covered the risk this led to a system of credit and the law of interest was well developed the contract of insurance was made an essential part of contract of carriage marine insurance was imported from the cities of northern italy where it was practiced at uh, at the end of about 12th century 
it became highly developed in the 15th century in the year 1556 king philips ii made marine insurance regulations for spain and in the year 1563 three ships were insured on a voyage from hawaii to central america in the year 1575 during the rule of queen elizabeth 1 chamber of assurance in the royal exchange was opened for the registration of marine parcels subsequently an act of parliament was passed in 1601 to deal with the disputes arising out of in marine insurance policies during the period 1720 to 1824 two companies to say london assurance and the royal exchange and joined a prominent position in the field of marine insurance it was only during the 18th century that marine insurance was started as a specialized business in 1906 the marine insurance act was passed under british legacy creating a standard operating procedure for policies that dictates the world's policy to this day the market for insurance on a worldwide scale has expanded rapidly in 20th century so we can say that credit goes more to the britishers for creating such procedures for the policies that till date it is dictating the world in marine insurance law marine insurance which covers liabilities cargo and hull hazards is still a crucial part of the worldwide insurance market today the fact that lawyers of london china and the nordic region are among the top providers of marine hull insurance which shows that how important maritime trade is for us in the contemporary day in the present era you can see specialist maritime insurance providers are essential in offering protection against unusual or difficult hazards that conventional insurers might not be able to offer these organizations which are frequently independent of insurers support innovation and market liquidity in the marine insurance sector through adoption and innovation marine insurance continues to protect the interests of ship owners cargo owners and other stakeholders in maritime commerce marine cargo insurance provides essential financial protection against the inherent risks of shipping which is crucial in defending the interests of cargo and ship owners in india cargo stakeholders may handle the challenge of transit with confidence if they have a comprehensive marine insurance policy in place knowing that they are sufficiently insured in the event of unanticipated circumstances so getting through the origin and development of marine insurance 
globally let us try to discuss how the marine insurance developed in india in india the growth of marine insurance has been phenomenal it has a deep rooted history it finds mention in the vedas written by manu that is dharma shastra and kautilya that is arth shastra it talks in terms of pooling at the time of natural calamities such as fire flood earthquake droughts famine and epidemics etc but as known to the world today marine insurance has its origin in england the britishers opened seven marine insurance companies in calcutta between 1797 and 1810 so marine insurance in india flourished during the british legacy period in india the law of marine insurance has been put in a statutory form by passing marine insurance act 1963 it was based on the original english law the preamble of the act states that it is an act to codify the law relating to marine insurance so this act was specially codified to discuss the laws related to marine insurance prior to the legislation that is the marine insurance act questions turning on this branch of law had to be decided by the general law of indian contract act 1872 and the british marine insurance act of 1906 the marine insurance bill having been passed by both the houses of parliament received the assent of president on april 18 1963 and became an act this act was amended by the repealing and amending act 1974 today marine insurance in india has assumed a vast canvas due to the expanding trade across the globe which involves large shipping companies that require protection for their fleet against the perils of sea indian shipping has increased significantly since independence and for indian marine insurance to continue to grow smoothly indian laws that are in line with indian conditions are now required before legislation decisions pertaining to this area of law had to be made use the common law principles of contract as well as the english case law and general principles of contract of law indian performance is essentially a copy of english version obviously i told you that it flourished it took place throughout the world during the british legacy so somehow our law is also influenced by the british laws closely adhering to its outline and just slightly 
departing from it wherever necessary suiting to indian conditions but as in the case of its english counterpart the indian act embodies only some and not all of the principles and rules of marine insurance and its language is also extremely concise and general that its full import and meaning can scarcely be understood without referring to the existing law which it was intended to express or to the decided cases from which that law was evolved this is what was discussed in records versus porestel in 1942 about the position of english marine law marine cargo insurance provides essential financial protection against the inherent risks of shipping which is crucial in defending the interests of cargo owners and shippers in india cargo stakeholders may handle the challenge of transit with confidence if they have a comprehensive marine cargo insurance policy in place knowing that they are sufficiently insured in the event of unanticipated circumstances now having all discussed about the origin of the marine insurance and its development in global context as well as in india we can rightly say that the indian insurance laws are somewhat resemblance of english laws but it has departed from certain principles as suits the conditions of indians now after discussing the historical development we will discuss the nature and scope of marine insurance the nature and scope of marine insurance is determined by reference to section 6 of federal insurance act 1993 and by the definitions of marine adventure and maritime perils of the marine insurance act 1963 it is a contract of indemnity but the extent to the indemnity is determined by the marine contract it relates to losses incidental to a marine adventure or to the building repairing or launching of a ship loss as i discussed with you that nature of marine insurance can be discussed with these two definitions the first one is loss it includes damage or detriment as well as actual loss of property arising from maritime perils and what is maritime perils it means that the perils consequent on or incidental to the navigation of the sea that is to say perils of the sea fire war perils pirates rovers thieves captures seizures restraints and detainments of princes and peoples jettisons barratry and 
any other peril either of the like kind or which may be designated by the policy so this is the vast definition has been given about the maritime perils in the indian marine insurance act 1963 section 2e and section 32 of the english act of 1906 the scope of marine insurance if we discuss is vast and covers a range of risks and perils the indian marine insurance market is highly competitive with both public and private sector players offering a wide range of insurance products these products include hull insurance cargo insurance marine liability insurance and marine reinsurance among others the scope of marine insurance in india also extends to inland water transport offshore energy and marine related businesses such as ship building and repairing the government of india previously and today has taken several initiatives to promote the growth of the marine insurance industry for instance the government has allowed foreign reinsurers to set up branches in india to ensure quality and competition and several other reforms such as streamlining the claims settlement process making it easier for policy holders to file claims and to receive compensation today marine insurance in india is a thriving industry with both domestic and international players offering a range of marine insurance policies to ship owners cargo owners and other stakeholders in the insurance market the scope of marine insurance in india has expanded beyond traditional hull and cargo insurance to include a range of specialized products such as liability insurance marine war risk insurance and cyber insurance so this is how the marine insurance grew in india it was a collective effort of government of india and it reformed the market it opened the market to the domestic and international players to offer a variety of insurance policies to say marine insurance policies and it has expanded from the traditional hull and cargo insurance and now a variety of insurance policies are offered by the various companies to cover ship inland or offshore about the products also so having discussed the nature and scope of marine insurance let us have a look at those companies that provide marine insurance policies in india there are certain insurance companies that provide 
marine insurance policies in india to name a few of them are new india assurance company oriental insurance company icici lombard general insurance company tata aig insurance company bajaj alliance general insurance company sbi general insurance company and hdfc argo general insurance company so there are certain good companies there is a competitive environment also by having a variety of uh, companies and to say big companies which are in the field of providing marine insurance policies now having discussed generality of the marine insurance now we will discuss the principles of marine insurance those principles which guides the companies to underwrite the marine insurance policies to form the marine insurance contract so there are certain principles and those are the fundamental rule guiding the implementation and management of marine insurance policies are known as the principles of marine insurance those fundamental rules which guide in the implementation and management of any policy is known as the principles of those insurance maybe it is life insurance general or the marine insurance these guidelines guarantee efficacy and justice in the handling of marine hazards important principles which we are going to discuss those fundamental rules or the principles which guides the formation of any insurance policy are number 1 utmost good faith that is principle of uberima fides a legitimate contract must be formed by the full and accurate disclosure of all pertinent information pertaining to the insured risk as both the insurer and the insured are obligated by an absolute obligation of honesty it is customary to classify breaches of the duty of utmost good faith under four headings this is how the good faith is breached non disclosure of the facts concealment of the facts innocent misrepresentations and fraudulent misrepresentations the first two that is non disclosure of the facts and concealment of the facts are termed passive breaches and the other two that is innocent misrepresentation and fraudulent misrepresentation are termed as active breaches the marine insurance act places a statutory duty on the assured to disclose to the insurer all the material circumstances known to him or which he should know in the ordinary course of his business it is expected from the insured to disclose all the facts that are within his knowledge not to conceal and not to obtain the policy through any fraudulent manners whether non disclosures is intentional or inadvertently the effect is the same 
and the policy may be avoided. Although deliberate and material non-disclosure would usually amount to fraud and it renders the policy void. So, if any fraud has been committed while getting the insurance policy, it is void ab initio and there is no chances of getting it voidable. Overvaluation, to take an example, overvaluation must be communicated to the insurers. If it is not so communicated, it is a concealment of a material fact and it voids the insurance. Second important marine insurance principle is insurable interest. The cargo or insured property must be subject to a valid financial interest held by the insured. The insurance contract is void without insurable interest. Whereas in fire and accident insurance an insurable interest must exist both at the beginning of the contract, at the inception of the contract and at the time of the loss. The interest in respect of a marine contract must exist at the time of loss though it may not have existed at the time when the insurance was affected. This is necessary when one considers the mercantile practice under which there is every possibility of sale and purchase of goods during the transit. If the assured has no interest at the time of loss, it cannot acquire interest subsequently by an act or election after he is aware of the loss. Arising from this, both a contingent and defeasible interest are insurable a partial interest is also insurable. Third marine insurance principle is indemnity. The purpose of marine insurance is to indemnify the insured financially also known as indemnity. In the event of a covered loss or damage. Without permitting profit, the payout seeks to return the insured to their pre-loss financial situations. So again, indemnity is very important principle to determine which guides the formation of any marine insurance policy. Fourth principle is proximate cause. In the event of multiple causes contributing to a loss or damage, the proximate cause that is the nearest cause or to say the most direct or dominant cause determines the coverage of insurance under the insurance policy. Insurers are liable if an insured parallel is the proximate cause of the loss. If an insured peril is only the remote cause of the loss, the proximate cause being an uninsured or expected peril 
the insurers are not liable the proximate cause is not necessarily that which is proximate in time but which is proximate in efficiency it is the dominant effective and operative cause of the loss another principle is subrogation the insurer may take up the insured's right to sue other parties for the loss after paying the insured the insurer is unable to recover the amount of the paid claim amount the right of subrogation is necessary incident of a contract of indemnity and broadly speaking the insurer in the absence of any special contract must exercise all remedies arising from subrogation in the name of the assured in marine insurance where an insurer pays for a total loss he is entitled to take over the interest of the assured in whatever may remain to the subject matter so paid for that is called the abandonment and he is subrogated to all the rights and remedies of the assured as from the time of the loss that is subrogation where an insurer pays for a partial loss he acquires no title to the subject matter in short or to such party of it as it may remain but he is subrogated to all the rights and remedies of the assured as from the time of the loss and in so far as the assured has been indemnified in marine insurance subrogation applies only after the payment of a loss the insurer is entitled to recover only up to the amount which he has paid in respect of rights and remedies an underwriter is entitled only to the rights of the assured in respect of the subject matter insured in so far as he has indemnified the assured now the sixth principle of marine insurance policy is contribution the idea of contribution is applicable when a risk is covered by more than one insurance policy according to the terms and limitations of their individual policies each insurer contributes a proportionate amount to the claims expenses as a contribution among insurers section 80 of the act it provides that where the assured is over insured by double insurance each insurer is bound as between himself and the other insurers to contribute relatively to the loss in proportion to the amount for which he is liable under his contract if any insurer pays more than his proportion of the loss he is entitled to maintain an action for contribution against the other insurers and is entitled to the like remedies as a surety who has paid more than his proportion of the debt 
So the condition is that as per Halsbury law, each policy must be in force at the time of loss. There is no contribution if one of the policies has already become void or the risk under it has not yet attached. The insurer from whom contribution is claimed can repudiate liability under his policy on the ground that the short has broken a condition. And the next is contribution. The idea of contribution is applicable when a risk is covered by more than one insurance policy. So having discussed these principles, let us see the classifications of marine insurance. There are four types of marine insurance. Number one, hull insurance. It covers the insurance of the vessel and its machinery that is furniture and fittings, machinery, tools, fuels, etc. It is affected generally by the owner of the ship. And second is cargo insurance. It includes the cargo or goods contained in the ship and the personal belongings of the crew and the passengers. Third type of third classification of the marine insurance policy is freight insurance. It provides protection against the loss of freight. In many cases, owner of goods are bound to pay freights under the terms of the contract only when the goods are safely delivered at the port of destination. And the fourth classification is liability insurance. It is one in which the insurer undertakes to indemnify against the loss which the insured may suffer on account of liability to a third party caused by collision of the ship and other similar hazards. So having discussed the classification of marine insurance, let us see what are the types of insurance policies that are prevalent in the market. Number one, voyage and time policy. A voyage policy is that kind of marine insurance policy which is valid for a particular voyage irrespective of the time involved in it. Second is mixed policy. Marine insurance policy which offers the client a benefit of both time and voyage. Policy is recognized as a mixed policy. Third type of policy is valued policy. In this type of policy, the value of cargo and consignment is ascertained and is mentioned in the policy document beforehand, thus making clear about the value of the reimbursement in case of any loss to the cargo and consignment. Fourth one is unvalued policy. In this type of marine insurance policy, the value of the cargo and consignment is not put down in the policy beforehand. Fifth one, port risk policy. This kind of policy is taken out in order to ensure the safety of the ship while it is stationed in the port. And sixth is wagering policy. It is one where there are no fixed terms of reimbursements mentioned above. In the insurance company founds the damages worth the claim, then the reimbursements are provided else there is no compensation offered. Seventh one is floating policies. It means marine policy where only the amount of claim is specified and all other details are omitted till the time the ship embarks on its journey is known as floating policy. So what is the importance of marine insurance? Why it should be taken? For most businesses, business items are their main source of income. Protecting them from any unfortunate event during transit contributes to the stability of the company's finances. It is impossible to overestimate the significance of this policy. There are few more other points which emphasize the significance of marine insurance that is protection against loss, compliance with legal requirements, risk management, facilitation of international trade, encouragement of investment and after going through this, let us see what the marine insurance covers. It covers total loss protection, sinking, fire, explosion, earthquakes, strikes, administrative costs, cargo loss during loading and unloading, dumping or washing, natural disasters, accident, collisions, etc. 
what it does not cover in short committed a willful act if there is a liquid leakage weight loss or volume loss if the packing is inadequate or unsuitable or if there is a delay of goods if the owners managers creditors or operators of the vessel defaults on their financial obligations etc so who needs marine insurance for a wide range of people such as ship owners freight forwarders businesses and individuals shipping goods overseas ship builders and repairers port authorities and terminal operators marine contractors charterers this all needs the marine insurance so there are certain documents for the marine insurance claim in case of loss if the insured wants to claim there are certain documents first of all he should inform the insurer at the earliest possible time and certain documents are required to be submitted that is to say number 1 original copy of the insurance policy certificate secondly survey report thirdly invoice then bill of lading claim bill copy of protest letter of subrogation bill of entry dock receipt so these all documents are required to claim the marine insurance benefits so in the nutshell we can say that marine insurance emerged during the british legacy now the indian laws are also self sufficient but those are in the lights of the marine insurance we have also discussed about the principles of the marine insurance and uh, how it originated in india and then we have discussed about the nature and scope of the marine insurance and what are the classifications of marine insurance what are the types of marine insurance which risks are covered which risks are not covered who should get the marine insurance policy and what documents are required to get the claim against a marine peril i hope this lecture fructifies to understand the concept of marine insurance policy thank you to all of you for being with me to discuss the concept of marine insurance policies thank you hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet we usually know william shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of english literature but we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature and here i am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize a long sections from macbeth or king lear or julius caesar uh before they can go and sit for their school and or college exams but i am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors tolstoy for instance considered the writings of shakespeare to be and i quote crude immoral vulgar and senseless george bernard shaw absolutely loathed shakespeare as he did homer but perhaps no other criticism about shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller provided someone 
has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.